So here we are at the end of the first quarter and the second one about to tee up. What can you do if you find yourself underperforming and currently below target? What strategies can you deploy in order to make up for lost time? How do you right your wrongs and turn things around quickly? Hi there, this is Gary Ryan Blair, and I put together this comeback manifesto to answer those questions and to provide you with a game plan. Specific actions and implementation strategies that you can deploy in order to bounce back, to redeem yourself and crush your second quarter goals. So let's get after it. When the novelist F. Scott Fitzgerald famously wrote that there are no second acts in American lives, he was obviously incorrect and ignorant to the fact that human beings have an enormous capacity for overcoming adversity, both personal and professional, with intelligence, patience, and panache. As you are confronted with the reality that the first quarter of the year is history, now is the perfect time to reflect on your year-to-date performance. So how many of your goals have you accomplished so far this year? Are you on track for having the best year of your life, or are you currently underperforming? If you continue doing exactly what you've done during the first quarter, where will you be at the end of the second quarter? Or at the end of the year for that matter? Will you be struggling, spinning your wheels and in the same place where you are right now? Why would you want to do that? Especially when you could be doing some of the following. Confidently executing the plan that launches your new online business. Completing the manuscript that makes you a best-selling author. Running the marathon you promised yourself and getting back into great shape. Crushing your sales goals, breaking records, and earning huge commission checks. Now, I know you started out the year with the best of intentions, determined that this year would be different. However, somewhere along the line, you lost your focus and dropped the ball. And now, you find yourself having to play catch-up. It happens to the best of us, but the good news is that that's about to change for the better. And I mean, much better. You see, I put together this comeback manifesto to provide you with a game plan. That is, specific actions and implementation strategies that you can deploy in order to bounce back, to redeem yourself, and to absolutely crush your second quarter goals. So you must recognize a few things about the importance of seizing this opportunity to start the second quarter fast, focused, and fired up. Number one, the second quarter will have little value to you from a productivity standpoint if you do not demonstrably step up your game and deploy better execution strategies. In a very real sense, this is a use it or lose it proposition. And number two, your loss is someone else's gain. If someone with more courage, conviction, and smarts than you will find a way to improve their performance and make the kind of progress that you only wish for. The importance of how you execute the second quarter of the year cannot be overstated. As if you have a successful second quarter, it naturally follows that you're closing any performance gaps, building momentum, and setting yourself up for a successful year. An aggressive approach to redeeming yourself in the second quarter is smart business and it's a devastating competitive advantage as your competition is left with no option other than to spend the balance of the year playing catch up. The second quarter of the year has arrived and the comeback plan that follows provides you with the motivational fuel and the justification you need to crush your goals and to make this the best year of your life. See, comebacks, redemption, and second acts are ubiquitous in our culture today. The salesperson or entrepreneur turns a bad year or quarter into one of redemption and prosperity. And the celebrity or athlete who falls from grace and bounces back bigger and better than ever. So often it's a major setback, that being cancer, divorce, job loss, the death of a loved one, bankruptcy, an accident or a simple faux pas on your part that puts a spotlight on our lives and shows us the way to a meaningful second act. Sooner or later, we all hit the skids. It happens to everyone. At some point in time, we wind up with our backs against the wall, and we are in need of a comeback. Yes, we all get knocked down, but successful people know how to pick themselves back up. So how do you do it? Well, here's your playbook for success. This comeback manifesto is your catalyst for quickly and dramatically turning things around, primarily because it focuses on one thing, getting you from point A to point B as quickly as possible. And the single best strategy for staging your comeback and for creating radical results fast is to play a strong, relentless offense. Teaching you how to play offense, more specifically, how to become a formidable opponent, an unstoppable powerhouse, 
a lean, mean, results generating machine that turns things around quickly and who makes huge performance gains is what this comeback manifesto is all about. So let's talk strategy. Strategy is defined as a plan of action intentionally designed to achieve a desired outcome. Now there are two and only two types of strategy, offense and defense. Offensive strategy exists to advance your position, to score goals, to put points on the board, in short, to win. Offensive strategy is proactive. It means playing to win. Defensive strategy, on the other hand, is all about protective posturing. It exists to hold ground, to prevent the offense or opposition from scoring. Defensive strategy is reactive. It means playing not to lose. Without apology or sugarcoating, Far too many people spend the majority of their lives deploying the wrong strategy. And that's precisely why they find themselves in need of a comeback. They choose to play defense. They choose to resist change. They choose to maintain the status quo. They choose to lower their standards. They choose to play it safe and to settle for less. They do not strike fast and hard when opportunity presents itself. They merely exist. They're a spectator and live a small, fear-filled life. And because of playing defense, they operate in a reactive, wait and see mode. They're constantly retreating, forever backpedaling. They're ridiculously hyper cautious, and sadly, they'll have very little show on the highlight reel for the first quarter. On the other hand, those that choose to deploy a strong, relentless, and determined offense in the second quarter and beyond will find themselves constantly advancing, consistently gaining ground, building massive momentum proactively creating conditions for positive change in the second quarter, and most importantly, crushing their goals. And that's what you really want, isn't it? As to why it matters, why there's always a time and a place for defensive competitive strategy. A strong, relentless offensive strategy is the only sure way that you're going to stage your comeback and to crush your goals. So what follows your 10 point game plan for driving bigger, better, and far faster results in the second quarter? Comeback rule number one is refuse to die. Those with the character to triumph in the end refuse to die. They will not allow the indignity of a failure or a setback to force them out of the game. Now you must be mindful that you will not turn things around, nor do you stand a chance of making any meaningful progress in the second quarter, unless and until you refuse to die. Until you decide to go all in and crush your second quarter goals by developing a plan, and executing your plan consistently, you'll forever remain in the situation that you're now in. And to stage your comeback and redeem yourself, you must look in the mirror and decide that once and for all, that you're done playing defense, that you're done settling for table scraps, that you're done standing by idly on the sideline while other people you do not perceive as being neither as bright nor as talented as you are living in nicer homes, driving finer cars, and enjoying a far superior quality of life. Why is that? Well, it's actually very simple. Decision always precedes action. And that's why you must decide that no matter what happens in your quest to turn things around, no matter how much suffering you need to endure, no matter the price that you need to pay, that you're in it to win it and that you refuse to die. That brings us to comeback rule number two, which is to move fast. If the objective is to make up for lost time and to crush your second quarter goals, then you owe it to yourself to find the fastest way to get it done. Now, if you can't, won't, or simply refuse to accept or dismiss out of hand what I'm about to share with you, you're making a huge mistake. One that I promise you will cost you any chance of making your comeback. Now, just think about it. If the goal is to become debt free, why perpetuate the pain and do it slowly? If the goal is to lose weight and get in great shape, why on earth should it be a long, drawn-out process? If the goal is to get better grades, why should it take any longer than the next exam to turn things around? And if the goal is to become the sales leader of your organization, why should it take until next quarter or next year for that matter, when you could wear the crown next month? The fact is, any goal, plan, idea, or project expands so as to fill and reinforce the unrealistic amount of time that you've made available for its completion. That's why comeback rule number two is to move fast. Comeback rule number three is to start saying no. No is not only the most powerful word in your vocabulary, it's also a complete sentence. 
It's the easiest word for setting a limit, for honoring priorities, holding firm to boundaries, and for being clear about you will or will not do during the second quarter. So you'll be infinitely more productive once you recognize these three things. The first, no is not a dirty word, it's not a negative word, nor is it a selfish word. Learning to say no is liberating as it frees up your time to focus on your key priorities. Number two, you're in complete control of how you spend your time and your life. Saying no allows you more time and energy to pursue your goals and your wildest ambitions. And number three, saying no increases the value of the things that you could actually say yes to. The fact is success demands a short yes list and a very long no list. Yet most people have that one reverse engineered and they pay dearly for it. See, saying no is the most strategic decision you can make in staging your comeback, as it immediately improves and accelerates both focus and effectiveness, guaranteeing a fast start to the second quarter. Comeback rule number four is to focus on results. The greatest waste of untapped resources in the world are the resolutions and the intentions that don't translate into purposeful, goal-directed behavior. Resolutions and intentions like getting in great shape, writing a novel, learning a language, or even unpacking the boxes from your last move are simply meaningless without action. Now I can state the following with the certainty of a man holding four aces. If resolutions and intentions were of any value, other than bring a false sense of comfort to the delusional, well, everybody would be skinny, happy, and rich. So to stage your comeback and to crush your second quarter goals, you must judiciously focus on results for the simple reason that in the end, only results matter. Intentions and resolutions devoid of actions are meaningless and incapable of putting food on your table or clothes on your back. So your results serve as judge, jury, and executioner of your performance. Now this truth applies the same way to a salesperson's ability to meet or to exceed quota, to a student's ability to maintain good grades in school, to a coach's ability to build a winning record, as well as to your ability to stage your comeback and to crush your second quarter goal. Now this is a rule without an exception. Therefore, stop focusing on intentions and start focusing on results. Comeback rule number five is to be unreasonable. Staging your comeback and fast tracking your second quarter goals requires that you become unreasonable in what you expect from yourself and in the unreasonable demands that you make upon others. Most people, on the other hand, settle for a small squeak of their potential because they bought into the belief that simply being reasonable is the way to go. How foolish and casually creating that belief is. See, the reasonable person adapts themselves to the world, while the unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to themselves. Therefore, all large, significant, and lasting progress depends on the unreasonable person. True success is achieved by the minority of people and requires an unconventional way of thinking. And if you think about it, great achievements are, have been, and will always be the results of unreasonable people driven by unreasonable expectations and exceptionally high standards. And the only sure way to fully redeem yourself and knock the ball out of the park in the second quarter is to take the road less traveled, to set big, challenging, and unreasonable goals and going for it in a very big way. Comeback rule number six is to go above and beyond. The distance between those who make a successful comeback and those who continue to underperform has everything to do with one's readiness, willingness, and ability to go above and beyond expectations. Delivering only what your customer expects will give you job security, and that's just a maybe, but it won't make you stand out in any way. And if you don't stand out, you certainly won't get promoted you won't get the referral, you won't get the repeat business, and you won't get the lifetime loyalty, the devotion, and the reverence that you're after. In short, you cannot possibly expect extraordinary results or superior compensation without consistently going above and beyond your client's expectations. The masses are always foolishly on the lookout for a new gimmick, a shiny new performance hack, a shortcut, but the truth is, the quickest way to advance your career to earn trust, to develop a world-class reputation, and to make a successful comeback is to always go above and beyond. Now, you either get the importance of that one or you do not. 
That brings us to comeback rule number seven, which is to rise and shine. Now, if you're ever going to find your greatness and to turn things around in the second quarter, you must decide that what you want is bigger and far more important than any fear, excuse, or self-limiting belief which prevents you from achieving it. And by doing so, you will rise to every challenge with confidence, with conviction, and with certainty. If you think about it for just a moment, you really only have two choices when faced with an obstacle, with a challenge, or an opportunity. You can either choose to rise and shine, or you can let it beat you down into submission. And as with most everything in life, it matters far more what we do about what happens to us, more than what actually happens to us. See, the ultimate reason for setting big, challenging goals is to entice you to become the person it takes to achieve them. You must refuse to die. You must decide that you will not be defeated, that you will not succumb to difficulty, nor will you ever tolerate an excuse. And your greatest glory is not in falling, but in rising and shining every time that you fall. Comeback rule number eight is to be relentless. Your success in making a successful comeback and crushing your second quarter goals is forever linked to your heart, to your will, to your steadfast commitment to your goals. The relentless attitude is the winning attitude. And the remarkable thing about life is that we have a choice every day regarding the attitude that we'll embrace for that day. You cannot ever let fatigue make you a coward, nor can you ever expect to win without struggling, without suffering, without sacrificing, as these are all essential elements for making a comeback and for redeeming yourself. Being relentless is a commitment. It's an empowering mindset that stands in the face of obstacles, hardships, temptations, financial difficulties, failing physical health, broken relationships, and stiff competition. Victory belongs neither to the faint-hearted nor to the weak-willed or the uncommitted. Certainly not if the enemy is great and his resolution strong. It's only by facing the opponent head-on and with a vengeance can the battle be won. To staging your comeback, and quickly closing any performance gaps necessitates that you fight on with undying, relentless determination. Comeback rule number nine is to stay hungry. Every goal possesses a simple question. How badly do you want it? And to realize your potential and to crush your second quarter goals, you must respond with some version of this answer. More. And then you must prove it. That's where hunger and passion come into the picture. Passion is hardcore devotion to a person, goal, or cause. It infuses life with meaning, with joy, significance, and unbridled enthusiasm. It's desire in your heart. It's fire in your belly. It's the twinkle in your eye. It is your magnificent obsession. Passion is your psychological mojo. It's a reason why you get up early and work late. It's the why that points the way, and it's an indispensable virtue that's far more valuable than money, power, or fame. And you must remember that whatever goals you have in the second quarter, that it's your passion, the white hot flame burning in your belly, that that is the only thing that will keep you committed to success. You must remember that in the end, the hungriest person always wins. Therefore, stay hungry and prove to yourself every day how badly you want it by taking massive, relentless action. Now that brings us to the 10th and final comeback rule, which is to become a quick change artist. Now, as you work towards the goal of making a successful comeback and fully redeeming yourself in the second quarter, you must embrace the idea that your ability to recognize and to adapt to change quickly is an asset in need of cultivation. While adapting to the relentless pace of change is difficult, not adapting is fatal, as history is littered with the corpses of very successful people and companies who were brought to their knees and put in an early grave due to their inability or unwillingness to adapt or to adjust to the changing environment in which they found themselves in. In almost every case, the sources of failure are obvious and avoidable. A failure to implement technologies that have already been developed, an arrogant disregard for changing customer demands, a complacent attitude towards new competitors. The throw in fear, the gravitational pull of resistance and a love affair with the comfort zone, and you've got yourself the perfect storm. See, change descends upon each one of us equally. The difference is that some of us realize it faster than others and adapt accordingly. And that's why you must implement this final comeback rule. Become a quick change artist. Now, are you ready to bounce back, 
to redeem yourself and to crush your second quarter goals. So I'm going to take the liberty of being blunt right now. There's absolutely no point in pretending that staging a successful comeback in the second quarter is anything less than the savviest move that you can make right now. And while there are plenty of excuses, there's no good reason for you to procrastinate, to say that the timing is not right or that it's not worth your time. And that is precisely why I created the 100 Day Challenge. The 100 Day Challenge is a hardcore goal setting program designed with one purpose in mind to show you how to get more accomplished in the next 100 days than most people do over the course of 10 years. I know a thing or two about driving radical results fast. And if you have a sincere desire to crush your second quarter goals, to play a much bigger game, and to make this the best year of your life, then the 100 Day Challenge is the program for you. Over the years, I've become known as the goals guy and developed a reputation as someone that immensely successful entrepreneurs, executives, and professional athletes, and even special military forces turn to when they need to step up their execution skills. I created the 100 Day Challenge to share with you the same methods that I've used to shatter sales goals, to quickly grow a number of multi-million dollar businesses, and to coach people to extraordinary, legacy-defining performances. And I accept full responsibility for inspiring people to do insane things like climb Mount Everest, to run their first triathlon, to launch their own businesses, and to say adios to their comfort zone forever. And the best part is that I'm confident I can do the same for you. The 100 Day Challenge is a proven execution model that produces the highest levels of performance. And like any world-class competition, it contains the key elements necessary for the unleashing of your greatness. That is rules, performance standards, accountability, a scoreboard, a finish line, competition, and most of all, fun. And the best part is that the 100 Day Challenge is appropriate for everyone in the boardroom, the classroom, the locker room, and the living room. Now you'll love the 100 Day Challenge primarily because we focus in on one thing, and that is getting you from point A to point B, or better yet, from setback to comeback as quickly as possible. And we're pretty darn good at it. In fact, the 100 Day Challenge has delivered jaw-dropping results for more than 525,000 people in over 80 countries around the world to include some of the most respected companies in the world. So is the 100 Day Challenge demanding? Does it require discipline, accountability, hard work, sustained commitment, and relentless action? You bet it does. But the results are ridiculously huge and life-changing. See, right now, at this very moment, you're just 100 days from transforming your life from crushing your goals, getting in great shape, becoming debt-free, skyrocketing your sales and income, and achieving any goal you want in record time. So why wait another moment? Sign up for the 100 Day Challenge, and together, let's get busy making some big things happen in the second quarter and staging a comeback for the ages.